They're flying under the radar a little bit, Fremantle. You said on Friday night that could be a big upset because when you're coaching against Collingwood, first-time coaching Robert Harvey, you're not sure what they're mm. going to come in with their style of play and they can do anything as they showed the previous week against Melbourne. But what an outstanding effort to, to get over the line. Uh, Freo have been doing a lot right for the majority of the year. They're, they've, their game's in pretty good shape. They're just For them early in the year, they just missed a lot of opportunities in front of goal and they squandered opportunities in their forward 50. So that sort of efficiency has been a part of their game that's really cost them. But their midfield is, is rock solid. I mean, Mundy's having an unbelievable year, but Chera and, and Brayshaw and Sarong are wonderful. Uh, their defence is getting better as they're getting a bit of the um, some players back and, and they're being a bit more potent in the front half. So, no, they're, they're doing a lot right and uh, they should be really pleased with where they're sitting at the moment. I want to give the coach a bit of a rap, OK? Justin Longmuir, I think he's done a fantastic job. It's been musical chairs over there. Mm. So when we look at yeah, the team, the, the health of a team, OK, often you can say, oh, we haven't got this guy, we haven't got that guy. But have a look at who's played all games. And I think this is a really good guide to how stable you are at selection. So usually it's a reflection of the, of the ladder, really. So those teams that have got 12, Melbourne have got 12 players that have played every game. Dogs 9, Brisbane 12. You'd expect them to be around the mark. Sydney 10 and 9 and so forth. You can see those guys you know, pretty settled. West Coast have, have had a bit of musical chairs going, good coaching performance yeah, you've to seen be that there. Last week, yeah. So you go, down, you go down to Fremantle and they're just outside of the 8 at the moment and they've had 5 players play all games. Sarong, Collier, Aish, Akers and Mundy. Right. And they've only had 3 miss one game in Darcy, Schultz and Brayshaw. Yeah. So th they've had to... They've had to recompile their whole 22 week on week. Yeah. So I think, it, I think it's a fantastic uh, attribute, attribute of your coach to be able to get this sort of performance out of a different team every week. Particularly your back line. That's where you want your continuity, with your back six or seven. They haven't had that all year. And even some young sparks in their front half. I thought Switkowski was important. He played excellent. And Liam Henry's going to be a beauty. So Star. getting that, that bit of speed in their front half and some class with those guys has really helped them in recent weeks. Well, Nat Five didn't play. And let's just take a listen to Justin Long and what he had to say on the issue. No, it was a late call. Um, he's travelled with us. He, he got through training really well. Um, and he just didn't really feel 100% confident. And it's probably got nothing to do with um, the pain or, or the shoulder itself. It's just about him being able to perform at his best and he just didn't feel up to it. So um, you know, he'll benefit um, from another week off and we'll look to get him back against Carlton next week. The docs were happy for him to, to play. Uh, he got through um, main training, but just didn't didn't feel like he, he was 100% comfortable. And, I mean, with a shoulder injury, you've got to be able to take the ball above your head with pressure on you. You've got to be able to, um, you know, put your head over ground balls. And we all know how, how Fife he plays. He plays a really combative brand of footy. So for him not to be 100% um, comfortable and, and make the call was something that I respected. And, like I said, we'll give him another full week of training and get that um, confidence in the shoulder up, and he'll be right to go next week. That was on Saturday Countdown. Kingy, yourself, Dermot and Hutto. Uh, a strange one for me listening to that. A uh, player's been given the medical tick. His body's fine. Everything's fine. But just didn't feel 100% to play. What do you make of that? It's I'm an confused. Awkward, yeah, it's an awkward one, isn't it? Because you put yourself in that position and if you're not right, you, you choose not to, you elect not to play. You own that decision. That's, your, that's yours to make. You're a business. Um, you, you've got to take the long-term approach. So, so there's two ways of looking at it. It's a huge win without five playing. So you get all benefits. You get him back next week, hopefully in a better space where he, he decides to play. Um, but I don't know if I've heard of, a, of the medical side of things being ticked off. It's not a pain issue and still not playing. I haven't heard no, of that before. Uh, my understanding, well, in the end, it was the right call, but my understanding was that basically the surgeon had basically said you, you could play. So if it was a grand final. You could get out and play. But if you gave it an extra week off, the percentage of it not popping out again would increase significantly. No. So the risk was if it pops out again. Yep. So I think he's been warned, look, if you pop it again, he's going to need surgery, I think, at the end of the season anyway. If it pops out in one more time, his year's done. Yep. So I think he's made the smart decision because we know he's a, he's a deep thinker and a footballer. Yep. He's thought, well, if I can just give myself one more week and the boys can get over the line, I then strengthen it and get that extra bit of recovery, I'm less likely for it to pop out again. And he's thinking long term. I think he's thinking about finals. He's thinking, hey, this team's not far away. Doesn't I want to be here at the finals. Does he know the answer? <laughs> no, he doesn't watch the, he doesn't well, now the, the show. Set too, like, Hopefully no he chance. doesn't listen to the show because <laughs> free men are still knocking on the door and they, you know, they should be expecting to play. So in the end it was a right call. But yeah, it, it was an interesting one because if it's grand final, he would play, yep. but smart the percentages of just getting that extra bit of strength in it and hopefully he can have a sustained run now for a finals tilt. I think Liam Henry could become one of the one of the high, high quality small forwards. I think we've seen the progression of um, Shai Bolton 
um, yep. over the last few years. They don't they don't just arrive. They take these building blocks along the way. I'm not saying he's going to be that level of player, but if he's half as good as that, mm. I mean, he's playing full forward as a he'd be 70 kilo if he's lucky. Yeah.